Let's say that we start with this light, which is unpolarized. If we start with that light that's unpolarized, and now we're going to pass it through two polarizers in a row. Here's one polarizer, and here's a second. What will the light look like at the end when it emerges? Will there be any light? Yes. OK, good. Yeah, there will be light. Why? It, um, so what will the light look like at this point? At this point, the light will be polarized in the up-down direction. So how does any of it get through here? Because it has um, the same components. Because so, that polarizer has up and down components as well. Yeah, so this polarizer does, um, because there is a component of this light that is parallel to the polarizer. So not, not all of the light will get through. So now I'm going to draw, so what does the final light look like? Well, first of all, which way is the final light oscillating? It's oscillating like this. And also, I'm going to draw these arrows shorter than the previous arrows. I hope they're shorter, because only a component is going to get through. So the naive person would say, gee, originally this selected for only up-down vibrations, and this is selecting for northeast, southwest, so at the end we should have no light. But now we can see that the, uh, the up-down uh, oscillations have a component that is northeast, southwest, so there still will be something that gets through. So for that one, not only does the up-down go get polarized, but also the ones that are diagonal as well? I didn't follow that. So not only does this... Does Oh, so the original electric fields, the original electric fields that were going up down just pass straight through, but we're also going to get portions of these oscillations too. We're going to get the, co the components of these other oscillations that were in the direction of the polarizer. That, that's right. That's a good point. But even though we're taking light from all these other oscillations, we still end up with completely, so I should have said that now we're starting with unpolarized light, we still end up with completely polarized light, because we're only taking the components of the other oscillations that are in the same direction as the polarizer. And then I was reading something in the textbook about how um, when things like bounce back, they, they bounce back polarized. Does that make sense? Like um, water, and I think like the roof of a car or something like that. Right. Like that. Sure. By the way, what would the final light look like here? If this is the second polarizer and this is the first polarizer. Um, so the ones that the electric fields that were diagonal do have a horizontal component to it. True. So only those would get through. So it would be very little. So it would look like this. Yeah. Let's take our time there. It still helps to draw what the light looks like in between the two polarizers. So when the light gets through the first polarizer, what does it look like? Which way is it oscillating? Up and down. Now it's true that some of this came from the original horizontal and diagonal oscillations, but the only part of them that's left is their up-down parts. So then no light would go through. Because now there is no component of the remaining oscillation that's in the direction of the next polarizer. So this is the case you were talking about before, where if we rotate the second polarizer enough, it completely gets rid of the light over here. Um, so yeah, now we end up with just this dot that represents zero light. OK, so that's a common way this would be tested. Now, um, so we're seeing here that a polarizer tends to cut down the intensity of the light that gets through, because it only lets through a component. So. You can express that in the law of Malus, which you might have seen. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? So here's our law of Malus. So theta is the angle between the polarizer direction and the direction of the polarized light. Theta is the angle between the polarizer direction and the light. So here the light is going horizontally. So I could label this as theta, because this is the direction the light would be moving in. 
All right, and then this tells you how much of the intensity gets through. Now, normally, what, what numbers does the cosine squared fluctuate between? What's the smallest that it could be or the biggest it could be? Zero. Yeah, well, that makes sense, because we would expect the new intensity to usually be smaller than the original intensity. A polarizer never gives you more intensity, because it's just a filter. All the polarizer can do is possibly subtract some. So usually this will be less than one, but bigger than zero. And the new intensity will be smaller than the old intensity. So as I think you're seeing, the S on the left-hand side is the intensity after we pass through the polarizers. And S sub zero is the original intensity. Uh, but let's think about um, some uh, extreme cases here. So uh, for example, let's say that the polarizer, if this is the original light and this is the polarizer, what would theta be? If this is the original light, and this is the polarizer we're passing it through, theta would be... I mean, sorry, zero. Because basically these are parallel. And when two things are parallel, the angle between them is zero. You know what the cosine of zero is? One. And then the cosine squared would still be one. And what would the law of values tell us about the new intensity? which is what we would have expected anyway. We already knew that this should let through all the light over here. Um, on the other hand, by the way, it doesn't matter if you use zero here or 180, yeah. because the cosine of 180 is negative one and we're squaring. Um, so let's say that this is the polarizer. Now theta would be, because these are perpendicular to each other and the cosine of 90 is, so that would tell us the new intensity would be, is that what we would have expected? Yes, that's what we would have expected um, in this case. And then just in general, you can see that the closer we are to this case, the closer the cosine will be to one and the more intensity will get through. And the closer we are to the perpendicular case, the closer the cosine will be to zero and the less intensity will get through. So this lets us be, as quant let us, let us be quantitative about that.